Amidst the antiquated Aegean writings dating back 4,000 years, concealed on Crete's old continental is a different script that may or may not be an isolate, but it is undoubtedly the most enigmatic of them all. And just like all the most enigmatic and secretive mysteries, it's right in front of us lying in wait. In addition to Linear A and Cretan hieroglyphic, there is another script that is as well known to non-experts and notorious among specialists, like the Paris Eiffel Tower or the Venice Gondola. It is an overused and exaggerated symbol in Greece. Its image is ubiquitous, stamped, printed, painted, sketched, reproduced, and subjected to gimmicky marketing and consumption as a component of a concept of Greekness that has no real connection to the Greek people. The Phaistos record, Luigi Pernier, an Italian archaeologist, discovered the disc in Phaistos, one of the great Minoan palaces early in the 20th century. Nothing like the extensive archives unearthed at Knossos in the northern part of the island, which were filled to the brim with Linear A and Linear B tablets, or the archives of Linear A tablets discovered at the Hagia Triada site, a settlement immediately south of and adjacent to Phaistos, were discovered within the palace. There didn't seem to be any writing at all at Phaistos. Pernier wondered how that could be possible, though. How could a palace so large and majestic, with its regal and opulent staircases, have so few inscriptions dispersed throughout? The last dig was scheduled for 1908 at this point, their money was running low for more palace exploration, a difficult time for Pernier, not least because he was envious of his competitor archaeologists and their spectacular finds, or so others around him said. Pernier required a major break, and he received precisely that. All, even his opponents, hailed his discovery of the Phaistos disc as the year's greatest discovery. Phaistos became well known very quickly, Everyone was stunned by the disc. There had never been anything like it. How did this little 16-inch piece of plain clay become the island's symbol, the Crete gondola? Why is it so captivating? The response is straightforward. It can be found in mystery books, Sunday morning crossword puzzles, TV shows that feature true crime, and the unrequited love that keeps you glued to your phone hoping for a message. The solution is hidden in the shadows, in our blind spots in life in the excitement of applying our analytical skills and in all of our future projections and expectations. The answer lies in the most seductive of all mysteries, the need to understand the unknown and arrive first, to investigate and to intuit, to interpret. We're easy pickings for the mysterious. It ties us to what lies ahead. Furthermore, we have a strong desire to shine our flashlights on something the more obscure it is and the darker the corner. It only requires the smallest of objects, such as the Phaistos disc. We can't get enough. A maze of unintelligible, unreadable symbols entices us into a state of hypnosis. Furthermore, the mystery surrounds not just the calligraphy, but also its provenance, its history, and the circumstances surrounding its discovery. Everything that surrounds the Phaistos disc talks of confusion, trap doors, and unresolved riddles. It has the vibe of Scrabble mixed up with a hint of clue. When someone has a little bit of luck, like our Luigi Pernier, what occurs first? The slanderers naturally jump to it. I swear to you, it's nothing more than a scam. A disc formed by the bitter, jealous and glory-hungry resentment of an archaeologist. There's no way it's real. We are all being duped by Pernier. It's a fake disc. Could the gossipers possibly have a point? Is it a genuine fake? Excellent query. Let's assess the circumstances. Then we have a cash-strapped excavation campaign that is nearing the end of its funding. And finally, we have an Italian archaeologist caught up in a competitive market. One great discovery could break the impasse in such a situation. Furthermore, anybody involved in the academic community is aware that cooperation and communication are the best ways to maintain a positive environment at universities it is far simpler to contaminate them with evil and jealousy. But enough of the hearsay. Now let us examine the facts. What is the true situation here? The disc is smooth, well-shaped rim and flawlessly stamped symbols make it extremely unique. It appears as though it may have been produced yesterday. Even if it's not, it appears to be a fake. Even among colleagues who are specialists in the field, 
Some people continue to hold this belief. Nonetheless, the archaeological context in which it was discovered is reliable and strong. Similarly, its dating can be attributed to the same time frame that Cretan hieroglyphic and Linear A coexisted on the island, albeit in separate areas. The disc was found next to a tablet bearing an extremely primitive version of Linear A. All things considered, and with the skeptic's approval, we have to come to the conclusion that Pernier never falsified anything and that the disc is, to use the colloquial term, good. It's time to bury this incredible story of lies and hoaxes, this rumor, beneath a mountain of pointless intellectual discourse. Let the grand tales end. Let us ask some reasonable questions. What you see may a disc like that have had? What is inscribed on it too? It is not an administrative text, the Phaistos disc. Its spiraling symbols are reminiscent of those found on another disc from a later era. This one made of lead and written in an Etruscan language that is still all but unintelligible today. In his excavation report, Pernier quotes the Magliano disc immediately, as if to admit, full disclosure, I didn't copy anything. Though it is only an odd coincidence, there are many similarities between the two artifacts. The dates are just too far off, and there is no historical connection between Crete and Etruria. What if it's actually a racing game similar to shoots and ladders? Unbelievably, among the thousands of interpretations, this has also been proposed. On round tablets, the Egyptians played a game called Mehen, in which the track resembles a coiling snake. Mehen actually means coiled one, the snake god, and the track that denotes the transition from life to death runs along its body. Shoots and ladders is, of course, less horrific and less gloomy in our present day. Is the Phaistos disc a remnant of Cretan entertainment the creation of a scribe disinterested in listing sheep and wool? I seriously doubt it. Furthermore, the disc might not be as unique as we initially believed. The Minoans were familiar with spirals. We can see them on rings, for instance, where Linear A circles the setting, or on your standard conical cups, where the inside is painted with Linear A spirals. Painting messages all around the inside of a goblet this deep is no easy feat, and they are also difficult to read but this disc is the least readable of them. Considering that this is ultimately an inscription that we are discussing, its inscription is an enigma and an impossibility. Once more, we find ourselves at the mercy of the unknown, and this time our only option is to accept defeat. We have to acknowledge that there are some things we can't, won't, or don't know. Shall we now hang up the towel? A practically unrecognizable spiral of symbols with many different types of men in different attitudes. A woman, fish, flowers, jars, axes, bees, doves, and numerous other figures, some of which are repeated, can be seen on both sides. That's the Minoan world, all right. Nevertheless, there is very little connection between these symbols and Cretan hieroglyphs. From where do they originate? What are they doing with this disc anyway? Two further mysteries are nested within the enigma of this thing. First, to ensure its lifespan, it was purposely baked at a high temperature, a strange event considering that the only reason the Linear A tablets and clay records containing Cretan hieroglyphs have survived are because they were burned or cooked in the flames that initially destroyed the Minoan and later the Mycenaean palaces. The clay is baked into tablets that are nearly unbreakable. Therefore, the fact that these items were saved and made it to us in almost excellent shape is just a wonderful coincidence. We'll refer to it as the Aegean epigrapher's serendipitous nature. The fact that the signs are not etched into the clay is the second enigma. They bear stamps. Centuries before Gutenberg and his movable type, which would not be invented until the European Renaissance of the 15th century, was the first printing. The characters on this disc are arranged in a circle and are all in a row ahead of the game. Since no other object was stamped using the Cretan molds, this predecessor lacks historical continuity. There is just one Phaistos disc. There are a total of 242 signs arranged in logical and purposeful word sequences, indicating that this is probably a genuine written language. If that is the case, however, are we dealing with a logographic script in which each sign denotes a morpheme or a syllabic script 
such as Craton Hieroglyphic and Linear A. Although the first possibility has more merit, the hypothesis cannot be supported by the overall number of signals. And that's the Unicum's specific curse. It is impossible to establish or refute anything. Not only is it an isolated instance, but it's also a black swan, uncommon, unique, unavoidable, and cursed. Cursed because it prevents us from using the scientific method, which means that nobody will ever be able to understand it. The philologist John Chadwick, who assisted Michael Ventris in deciphering Linear B, wrote about the Phaistos disc with a hint of irony in his writing. If King Minos himself revealed to someone in a dream the true interpretation, it would be quite impossible for him to convince anyone else that his was the one and only possible solution. Clearly. Story ends here. In this relaunch of Shoots and Ladders, we have a dead-end track that prevents anyone from winning. The only light at the end of the tunnel, as they say in Rome, is the light of an approaching truck.